Well, we're joined now from Paris by the French politician Jacques Maillard. In the studio here is Catherine Heseltine, Hi. former head of the Muslim Public Affairs Committee, and in Amsterdam, the Dutch cartoonist Ruben Oppenheimer. Welcome to you all. Um, uh, oh, yes, let me just also show that his drawing in response to the Charlie Hebdo attacks showing the Twin Towers with two pencils in place of the skyscrapers was widely shared on social media around the world. So just to be clear that we've seen that image there that Ruben has drawn. Let me start with you, Jacques Maillard. Um, presumably, you're rather pleased today. Five million copies of Charlie Hebdo sold, um, sold out by lunchtime. Does this vindicate uh, what you've been saying all week? Well, if I did understand your question, because the sound is very bad, of course there was a, a hedge on the Charlie Hebdo, and uh, every Frenchman, almost every MP, has bought one copy. It shows the way that we see freedom of expression and freedom of the press. And this is a genuine blow to the terrorists and jihadists. It doesn't mean, unfortunately, that it is understood by the Muslim. When I came up here, the driver, you know, was a Muslim from Tunisia, and he said, I don't understand why you make cartoons of the Prophet. And what did so you say to him? it doesn't mean that there is, a, let's, I said, the, 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 the taxi driver said to me, I don't understand why you make cartoons of the Prophet, and this is not acceptable because you put at anger one billion of Muslims. But they, they, they will have to get used to it, you know, because we but are not going to surrender right. freedom of... You're, so you're saying they will have to get used yes. to it, but if you offend them, if they feel offended by these cartoons, surely the, you have to respect that opinion as well, don't you? Well, yes, but, you know, this is a question that those people should be guys, get used to it. And freedom of expression is more uh, important in our view than, of course, what is a judge abroad. It, it, you know, if the Muslim states don't want Charlie to come in their country, they will stop it at the frontier. But in France, we are a sovereign state, and we are going to carry on with our freedom of expression and cartoonists. OK, let me turn to you, Catherine. You heard it there from Jacques Maillard. Now, he's a French politician, mm -hmm. not a British politician, but he basically said, get used to it. Will you get used to it? Sadly, uh, I, to put the debate in context, I found as a Muslim it's necessary first of all to make clear that I condemn these murders. It's a sad state of affair when it's no longer assumed that mur uh, Muslims are against walking to an office and murdering people. Mm. Um, but no, uh, just because something is illegal to publish doesn't mean it is right to do so. And I will not take lectures from French politicians on freedom of expression when the French government has banned pa pro-Palestinian rallies. Arrest people. There was a cartoonist who was fired from Charlie Hebdo for anti Semitism and put on trial in France. So you think he's being hypocritical? Yes, Muslims should deserve the same basic human respect and not be subjected to this dehumanization. But he's also saying, or he's told me when I was spoke to him in France a couple of days ago, and other people have said the same, that um, many Muslims you speak to in France and possibly in this country mm. as well um, obviously don't condone the attack. But they're not necessarily stepping out in front and saying right off the bat, this is unacceptable. It's almost an addendum to, you know, the fact that they feel offended by, by the cartoons. No, I think it is clearly unacceptable. Um, and I am also uh, tired of this narrative where Muslims are somehow expected to apologise um, for the action of these terrorists in a way that when Breivik, who declared himself 100% Christian, uh, Christians and Christian leaders were not trotted out to ask whether they condemned it or not. Right. Um, but this is about power dynamics. This magazine was actually peddling a racism against the Muslim community, dehumanising a powerless and discriminated against group in a way that stokes the Islamophobia and the violence mm. in turn that Muslims are suffering. OK, let me turn to Ruben Offerheimer in, in Holland. Um, Ruben, is there anywhere where you would draw the line with cartoons? Is there something that you would not draw? Good evening. Um, I, I do that every day. I draw lines every day. That's not a joke. But, um, of course, when I uh, try to uh, determine for myself what is acceptable or not, I, um, I sometimes have to say, no, 
not this time. Um, but it's it's not not that it doesn't happen that often. But for instance, to give you an example, when there's a very small personal suffering, when a family has a tragic loss in an accident or something like that, those are um, um, th those are topics that I would not very easily find, uh, uh, I wouldn't find it easy to make a cartoon about it, but big issues like religion, um, like terror, like all the things that are, um, uh, uh, yeah, hot stuff, sad to say, I, I can't draw a line there. I okay, can't, well, let, let me I, ask, I cannot. Sorry to interrupt, so let me ask you, yes. for instance, would you draw a cartoon about the Holocaust? Um, I wouldn't feel the need or the urge right now, but um, if there is a uh, reason to, I wouldn't see why not. And I think this is a big hypocrisy indeed in the West. Um, when you want to publish a cartoon that questions the Holocaust, which I'm not doing, by the way, to be <laughs> quite clear, I'm, doing, I'm not doing that. But if you would want to do that, you would have find yourself in a big trouble. A few years ago, uh, there was a, a Belgian um, Islamic organization that did that. They made, they published the cartoon about the Holocaust, and mm. they were uh, condemned. And I think that's a big hypocrisy. And if you want to allow people to uh, f participate fully in our society, you should also allow them to uh, to, to strike back with the right. same measures. So fight cartoons with cartoons. And okay. if I can add one more thing. In 2009, uh, the uh, regime in Iran um, started at, uh, had an exposi exposition with Holocaust denial cartoons. I didn't like any of those cartoons, but I, uh, I hooray the idea. Uh, I found it a very intelligent way to show us okay. in the West, right. okay, we, you're mocking our prophet, we're mocking something that is holy to you. Okay. And that's okay. the best way to respond, okay. I think. Okay, Ru Ruben, thanks very much. Just one final and very brief question to you, Jacques Maillard in Paris. Can there be such a thing as the fundamentalism of free speech? Um, and is, is free speech ever really genuine? Or, or even when you're making these judgments, there are certain lines that you yourself would not cross. I'm sorry, I did not get your point. The sound is absolutely awful. I can't hear you properly. Can you repeat your question, please? <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? We have, we've run out of time, I'm afraid. I was going to talk to you about the fundamentalism of free speech, but that is a very complex uh, issue on a really dodgy line. So many apologies, well, but thank you, you know, for... Uh, yeah. Well, come on, one line then. Okay. Yes, what I wanted to say, you know, it's not a critics against Islam, it's cartoonists. If people are offense, they don't need to buy Charlie or any cartoons. That's why, you know, by killing those people, they made such publicity. This is why there is such a big reaction. But I think that uh, we should all together stand for freedom of speech and okay. freedom of cartoonists. Okay, from the fundamentalism of, of a really dodgy Thank line, you. many apologies. Jacques Maillard, Ruben Oppenheimer, uh, Catherine Heseltine, thanks very much indeed.